Okay, so let's dig into brain reserve. So what is a brain reserve curve? Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually go through a live demonstration and an illustration of my own brain reserve curve so you can see what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Not only does it highlight the awareness of everything that's maybe happened in your timeline uh, for your life, but actually things that you can pay attention to today to make a significant change for your brain health and your overall optimal health because your brain's involved in everything that you do. So let's jump over to the brain curve and go through an illustration about what this actually looks like. Okay, so what you could see on the screen here is an actual brain reserve curve, which is up here in the top left corner. This would be at birth, right? This is this would be like your mom's health, right? Um, so mom's health. And this is so, so important because if you know that, you know, your mom took good care of herself and so did your dad and everything, then you're going to start off with great, uh, you know, gene expressions, uh, with brain reserve curve and everything. And so that's step one, right? Uh, step two, what has happened in your life? And it doesn't matter what age you're at because you can still reflect back on certain things. But what has happened in your life that may actually impact your brain reserve curve? And so... For example, uh, what you'll see, and, and we provided an illustration on the graphic in this course, but over here is your brain reserves. And then once you reach this breaking point is when symptoms start to happen, meaning I forget things, my memory is fleeting, maybe even as far as you know, risk of Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's. Uh, and then down here is just really bad trouble, right? It means a, a lot of recovery. And the great thing is you can. And if you follow any of uh, Dr. Amy and Amy Clinic's uh, work, you know that they help people recover these type of things, even professional athletes that have had um, you know, memory issues or, or forgetful issues. Uh, so there's always something you can do to make a change. Over here, I'm gonna walk through what it looks like to actually build better daily brain habits to help you get back to where you need to be uh, after making some poor choices and or environmental factors that really you just couldn't control. So as we dig into this, I'm gonna go through my own story here. So mom's health, I mean, thankful that I had two great parents and uh, they both took good care of themselves. And uh, so at birth, I'd like to think that my brain reserves were relatively good. Uh, so we start at the top, right? Uh, from there though, what you're gonna see is, 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 a, is a series of choices that definitely didn't help uh, my, my journey in this uh, brain health curve. And so the first one that you're gonna see is emotional trauma. Um, and because of some complications at birth, I, I ended up with some poor eye troubles, ear troubles and everything, which resulted in surgeries later on, but ended up being uh, bullied as a kid. And uh, it put emotional trauma and stress on me. And that puts, puts stress not only on your body, but also on your brain, right? Uh, and so the average person has 75,000 thoughts a day. So just imagine like if most of those, a majority of those thoughts are negative, that's not a good thing. So uh, unfortunately, um, that's just what happened uh, was as a child, but it's good to know that because that also negatively impacted uh, my brain. Next, um, brain injuries. So uh, growing up, I was uh, an athlete. So I played football, basketball, baseball, even ran track. Um, and I uh, better believe it, like I tackled wrong and led with my head and ended up with concussions in football. Uh, a couple of them very severe. One of them put me in the hospital unconscious. Uh, and then also a concussion in basketball as well. And so as you go through your childhood, even things like playing with your uh, friends or your, or your uh, siblings and you know hitting your head really hard, like all of that is head trauma. Right. And so all of that impacts the brain. And in this particular case, when I'm talking about concussions, uh, it's very serious. And so brain injuries did not uh, do me a good favor here. The next one is uh, unfortunately secondhand smoke. And so uh, cigarette smoking and all the effects that it has on lung cancer and every, all the studies that came out um, created a huge awareness for everybody and big change. But before that, a lot of people smoked and a lot of people smoked in the home. Uh, and so we, uh, you know, growing up as kids, there was, there was some cigarette smoke that we would inhale as kids in the home. Um, and my parents are amazing now. They learned that back when we were kids and, and you know, fought through 
not smoking anymore, but unfortunately we just didn't know. Right. So, uh, also everywhere you went, like, I remember the old scenarios of like the smoking in restaurants and, and bars and bringing that in. And even with the non-smoking section, like you're sitting right next to somebody. Right. So we just, we didn't know. Uh, but now we do. And so if you live through that era, uh, unfortunately, you're either a exposed to it and you couldn't really control it if you wanted to be on public or maybe your family uh, experienced, you know, cigarette smoking, but um, things changed eventually. But unfortunately, that is a, a big um, decline uh, in brain reserves and brain health. Next, uh, fast food diet. And unfortunately, you know, this is for many people. Um, we just lead uh, fast paced lives, which require us to eat food out and on the go and, you know, grab high sugar, uh, ultra processed bars and think that they're, you know, nutritious, or maybe the marketing has kind of persuaded us to think so. And so unfortunately, uh, even back when I was a kid, there was, there was not as much research and talk about it as there is now. Uh, so I most certainly live what's, what's coined as the West, uh, Western American diet. And uh, I eat fast food every day. Uh, I, you know, I eat McDonald's uh, for lunch and, and pizzas and I eat high sugary cereals for breakfast. Uh, you know, thankful that my mom made a really nice uh, cooked dinner meal for us when we were home, uh, but just did not eat the greatest. Uh, and I felt that later on in life and that's kind of what warranted the big change, but all of that places negative constraints on your health uh, because inflammation on your body also causes inflammation in your brain. Because uh, there's something that runs through from your gut to your brain called the vagus nerve, and they communicate back and forth to each other. So important to know, but if you live a poor diet, it will also impact um, your brain health. Next, uh, poor sleep. I used to uh, jokingly say the phrase often that, you know, you could, you can sleep when you, when you're dead. And that's not good advice. Uh, there's so much research out there about how important sleep is. Sleep is actually one of the body's most effective uh, detoxifiers. Uh, so when you're sleeping, your body, your brain actually gets rid of all the toxins you accumulate throughout the day, whether that's things you've consumed in your body or you've absorbed um, within the environments that you live, uh, your body just cleans out. Uh, and so you have to give it that uh, ability to do that. And then of course, rest, right? Rest in your body and recovery. Uh, but I would go through this notion of not sleeping uh, in college and then even worse uh, later on about, you know, staying up late, working, maybe watching too much TV uh, and uh, all of it was severely impacting my brain health. Uh, so poor sleep is also a negative. And then the last one I want to call out here, uh, transparency, is uh, depression. Like uh, once I had basically went down this path, I um, even though with some minor success in, in, uh, my, you know, my business, personal, uh, finances, uh, and family and everything, I just was not doing something that I cared about. Also, I was not in good health, right? My thoughts were probably not where they should be. And my feeling of my body wasn't where it should be. And so went through some small bouts of depression, uh, until I decided to make a huge change. And, uh, one thing you'll notice in brain rabbits we have is a one page miracle. I would encourage you to to think about that, contact us, reach out to a coach through our network, uh, check out some of the discoveries on the discovery and the assessments, uh, my health quiz, see where you're at and talk to somebody um, about things that you can do now. And that's why we're covering this in this course. So now the great thing is all of that was gonna lead to symptoms, right? Symptoms of, of what you'll soon hopefully find out is ANS, automatic negative thoughts, uh, maybe memory loss, a little bit of dementia, fog, uh, brain fog. A lot of us are walking around with a lot of brain fog these days, right? It's the foods that we eat, no sleep, uh, poor exercise routine or no exercise. And so all those things impact you, but you can make a change. And so that's why this class is so important. Uh, and that's why I'm sharing this with you is because it'll highlight this journey for you so you can make these small steps. Uh, so for me, that change really happened when I decided I wanted to do things with my life, right? I set some goals. I wanted to work in food, health, and agriculture, and education, and uh, immediately started questioning uh, my food and where food comes from. And so I could not only give that back to myself, but to give that back to our kids. And so I started doing uh, more of a food diet here. And so I'm going to go ahead and notate that food diet. Um, I also started exercising and taking supplements. And so, you know, one person, or, you know, sometimes they'll ask like, 
are supplements really needed? Uh, and there are a lot of uh, practitioners out there that'll tell you like, you just don't get the nutrients that you used to get out of the food. And this for not just over the last few years, like a hundred years. Uh, so agriculture has changed significantly how we farm, uh, the implements that we use on the land, pesticides, herbicides, uh, glyphosate, things like that, uh, really hinder the ability for us to produce good food. Even if you're an organic farmer, you know how tough it is. So supplements are just a necessary evil uh, and are just good to help supplement areas that we just can't get uh, in our foods today, unfortunately. But all of these things start to raise your brain reserves. So the next thing, uh, and I kind of alluded to this a minute ago, but it's purpose. Having that connection, uh, you're going to learn a lot about the four different areas of brain health, uh, psychological, social, spiritual, um, and biological, and per having a purpose, having a connection to, to some things, uh, you know, universe, uh, God, um, a purpose to your value and your being, what you care about, it matters. And we can help you get there if you feel lost or if you want to amplify and figure out ways to do that. So having a purpose matters. Learning, continuous learning. So much research out there supports how much uh, impactful it is for you to continue learning. The prefrontal cortex isn't fully developed for uh, females till age 25 and for males, 28. And then after that, it's really, it should be a journey of continuous learning, right? Continue to grow what's called gray matter in your brain, not to get too scientific here, uh, but it really does grow brain health. So uh, what are you doing to learn on a daily basis, whether that's, you know, reading new blogs, podcasts, books, taking that learning and sharing it with others. Um, anything that you can do to grow your mind is key. So uh, for me personally, I started picking up a habit of reading uh, while I was exercising and, and also, you know, podcasts and research and stuff, but I, I'm able to complete somewhere near 40 to 50 books a year, with, which, you know, with some speed reading techniques and stuff like that. It's awesome. Uh, so continuous learning. Uh, the next one is sleep. It's still an area that I uh, would like to focus on, uh, but is is slowly becoming more key for me in the focus. And so I try to talk about routine schedules around sleep. So the prep to sleep, meaning how am I setting myself up to sleep, uh, the amount of hours I'm giving myself to sleep, uh, and then the time window that I go to bed and wake up is consistent uh, so that my circadian clock. Uh, is set well. And so all those things are amazing. And again, I talked about detoxifying process for your brain. So all of these things help give back to the areas uh, that could have been um, taken away from you uh, through environmental factors. And so I wanted to share a few of these examples so that you can see. Uh, but next, I'm going to walk you through, you know, just a couple of tips that you can do to start to think about yours. And then a couple of uh, exercise or activity handouts that you can use to develop your own brain reserve curve. So stay tuned and uh, check out the, the next uh, session on the activities that are available to you.